Hi, it's time for our Lego Bible story. I have my Lego sized Jesus and my Legos all spread out. I hope you have yours ready too. Our story today comes from the Gospel of Mark and it's the story that we'll hear on Sunday. And it actually starts in the middle of a conversation. Jesus had been talking to his disciples and asking them, who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And Peter had said, you are the Messiah, the promised one, the chosen one of God. And then Jesus began to teach his disciples. And he taught them that the Son of Man, which is one of his titles, must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said all of this just quite clearly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him to kind of talk to him sternly about that this is not okay to be talking about. But Jesus turned and looked at the disciples and rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, not on the things of God, but on human things. And then he called to the crowd along with his disciples and said, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Kind of tough words, aren't they? So here we have Jesus. And this is when he's first teaching his disciples. That's when he began to teach them. So you could say that he was teaching them by what he was doing before, but this is the first time he's really kind of instructing them. Can you imagine if, if you went to school or to class and your teacher began teaching and said, well, to start with, um, nobody's gonna like me and I'm gonna be killed. And I'm gonna be killed um, and then I will rise again. Would you have any idea what that meant? Would it make any sense to you at all to, to have that kind of conversation? I don't think so. But that's how Jesus started. And he was falling down here, sorry about that. And the cross, which I don't know what you think about when you think about a cross, but I sometimes think about the ones that we have at church um, or some beautiful images of crosses that I have or, or a cross that I might wear around my neck. I don't generally think of the cross as the vehicle of murder by the state, like a violent torture death, but that's really what it was. And the people who were listening, the disciples, and the people in the crowd would have known that. So the cross would have been horrible and, and it wouldn't make any sense to them that the Messiah would be talking about taking up a cross. A, cr a cross was an instrument of torture. It's not at all proportional, but that's the cross that I can make. And Jesus said, if, if you're going to follow me, you have to take up your cross. And, and actually when people were killed, um, by crucifixion, which is what it's called when you die on the cross, they had to carry the cross through the streets. Um, and so that would be heavy. And that was just one more way to humiliate them and torture them. And I, I don't know about you, but if somebody was telling me, yeah, come follow me um, and take up your cross. I mean, kind of like, maybe I don't actually want to do that. I kind of sympathize with Peter who, who spoke to Jesus about what he was saying, that this, this, isn't, this doesn't sound very good. I don't know if that's how you would be too. But that's what Jesus said. And he said, if you are going to follow me, this is what it looks like. So it doesn't sound like the best advertisement, does it? So come follow me, take up your cross, um, that instrument of torture. Maybe if you follow me, then people will dislike you in the same way that they dislike me and you could die too. That sounds kind of hard, doesn't it? Doesn't surprise me that, that Peter was, was speaking to Jesus. I mean, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Another word for Satan is the tempter. 
So don't, don't tempt me. And you're thinking about the wrong things. I wonder what the divine things would be as opposed to the human things. I think it's pretty easy to figure out the human things. I think Peter wanted to save Jesus and wanted to save himself and didn't really like that idea of being killed. That seems reasonable to me. I like Peter because he says and does a lot of the things that, that I might be thinking sometimes and does them sometimes without thinking. But I wonder with the things of God or the divine things first. So if it's not about saving your life or just saving the life of your friend, I wonder what it was to set your mind on divine things. In this gospel, although Jesus hadn't been teaching yet, he'd been doing things. He cast out demons. He healed people who were sick. He healed the women as well as the men. He did things in the synagogue and in private homes. He was already going to the people who were on the outside and restoring them, making people whole again. Both the people who would have been part of the community and the people who would have been excluded from the community. Jesus went to all of them. That seems to be, maybe, what the setting your mind on the divine things is. I wonder if that's what you would think. I wonder if you think it's something else. And I think that when Jesus was doing that, Jesus kept turning everything upside down. And turn them all upside down. Kind of makes a mess. Well, hard to tell with these. But if I was the person who had been, I don't we'll make this not a cross anymore. If I had been the person who was on top, And Jesus was turning everything upside down. And that would mean the people who had been on the bottom might come up to the top. But it might mean the people on top might go down to the bottom. And do you think people like that? Have you ever found that people who are in charge or have a lot of power or a lot of stuff, they don't really like it if they get lose all their stuff or lose all their power? And they feel threatened and they want to keep it the way that it was. So when Jesus was coming around and he was including all of the people who were usually excluded and he was saying strange things like the last shall be first and the first shall be last, he was changing the way things were, which was great if you were one of the people who was on the outside, but not so great necessarily if you were on the top of the inside and you wanted to stay there if you were all about the power here on earth. And so he made lots of people mad. And when you make powerful people mad, sometimes it's dangerous. And he was saying to, didn't mean for him to fall over again. He was saying to the, all of the crowd that if you follow me, if you, if you wanna follow me, you're gonna take up your cross. You're going to do the things that may make people angry and your life might be in danger. And he said, what is it to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? I think, I wonder what, what you think that means. I think it might mean that if I could, I could probably make a lot of money. Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, I could have made a lot of money if I had stockpiled toilet paper because people were looking for it everywhere. So if I had toilet paper and Lysol wipes, I could have sold that for way more than I bought it and made lots of money. But I would have done that to people who really needed toilet paper, because we need that, or, or needed wipe, Lysol wipes in order to sanitize things to stay, to stay safe. So I think there I'd be forfeiting my life, forfeiting myself, because the word for life there is also the word for self, like forfeiting who I really am inside in order to get ahead. And I think Jesus is saying we, we can't do that. We can't lose who we are in order to get ahead. But I, I wonder how many of the people followed him when he told them how dangerous it was going to be. I wonder how many people in the crowd believed him when he said he was going to die. And if anybody had any idea what it meant that he would rise again. 
I wonder what you think when you hear those words. I wonder what your, your build with your Legos. <laughs>